last, you know, they, they, when they they came back from the edge of destruction, they won that game. So how'd it go last night? Is it three and two now? Are we headed back to Milwaukee? Hugh, well, first, first of all, Hugh, I represent the 8th district, eighth not district. the 1st uh, district. Right. Don't put me in Paul Ryan's district. Sorry, okay? sorry, but, so but I'm, mom, we're still, I'm my, so excited about the Bucks and their comeback. My mom lives in that district. Uh, yeah, well, she's excited about the Bucks and their comeback, too, right? Second of all, Hugh, this series was over in Game 3 when we had an epic 12-point fourth quarter <laughs> collapse. Or let me rather say... You're, gi- you're giving up? What, what happened? The minute that uh, the Bucks decided to boycott their own business and uh, spark a sports-wide boycott. What, what happened? Did, did they lose? They oh, they lost they last night. Off the ball, Hugh. They quite oh. literally eye off the ball. So. You know, when the, when the uh, Cavaliers were down 3-1 to one and against the Warriors in 2016, they came back and won the series 4-3, the only time it's been done in NBA history. And I, I, realize, I, I know you probably gave up when they were down 3-1, but we Cavaliers fans know not to do that. Hugh, I, this is one of the rare occasions where I have no, I have no response to this. Well, this actually, is one of the worst. But okay. maybe with the exception of last season. This is worse than last season. Actually. And now you're losing what the unpronounceable forward's name. He's leaving, right? No, we're not losing Giannis. Giannis yes, he's going away. You know, we're come on. He's get some talent around He's going to go play with connect. LeBron. You know it. I know it. The world knows it. He's going to L.A. They all go to L.A. You know it. So, Congressman, I want to talk to you about two things. Big Ten football not starting and the embarrassment it causes us both. And Mulan. So let's start with the Big Ten and move to Mulan. Really, what do you hear from Wisconsin officials? Uh, how can the SEC play and the Big Ten not play? It makes absolutely no sense. I think based on the latest data we have, there has been a lot of students getting infected on the order of 26,000 positives. But to my knowledge, there's been zero hospitalizations among the student population because it makes sense. They're young. They're healthy. The other thing I've been trying to put together, and I've been talking with people that work at University of Wisconsin, is why, and my my wife's nephew is there as a freshman right now, why all the kids are in the dorms, and yet they're doing most of their classes online and digitally. That, to me, seems like the worst of both worlds, because you get the spread in the dorms, but you don't get the value of being in the class. And I just would submit, if kids are in the dorms, kids can play football. In fact, it's healthy for them to be out there playing football. It's going to be a huge revenue loss to the university system on the order of $100 million. And so it makes absolutely no sense. We should be playing Big Ten football. People need sports. Young men and women need to play sports. And that pertains to the high school level as well. I have some high schools here in Northeast Wisconsin that are finding ways, innovative ways for their kids to play sports. Others are being a little bit more risk averse. I think the data clearly shows that we can allow kids to play sports without unnecessary risk or unnecessary spread occurring. Yeah, one whispered stat uh, about the likelihood of heart disease among young athletes killed the season, and the new Big Ten commissioner killed the season, and he was being PC. And, I, you know, I haven't heard anything from Coach Meyer. I haven't heard anything from anybody. I just think it's an embarrassment that the Big Ten cannot play and the SEC can. It just it makes the Big Ten look inept. They don't have science. They don't have conditions. They don't have facilities. They have great facilities, except in Wisconsin. They have great facilities at every one of these campuses. And now let's move to Mulan. All right. Um, Mulan is coming out not without controversy. I did not realize they shot this throughout China. I did not realize they shot this probably within driving an hour distance of concentration camps, Mike Gallagher. What is Disney saying about this? Well, I don't know what Disney has said, uh, but I would just say to you, Hugh, outside of a Browns win, there are a few things that truly shock me these days. (laughs) But I have to say that the fact that Disney went out of its way to thank not one, not two, not three, but four Chinese Communist Party propaganda departments, along with the Public Security Bureau of Turpin in Xinjiang, which the Trump administration put on the entity list last fall due to its complicity in human rights abuses, is unconscionable. All you have to do is open a paper these days to read one shocking description after another of the heartbreaking details from Xinjiang, from mass sterilization to rape, to forced labor 
in concentration camps to realize how evil uh, this practice is, uh, what's happening in that province. And now we find out that not only did Disney personnel work on location in the middle of Xinjiang's concentration camps, but they actively collaborated with and thanked some of the security forces directly responsible for these crimes against humanity in their credits. And to top it all off, you, Disney altered the story's traditional telling to portray Xinjiang as an indelible part of China that Mulan must defend at all costs. This is crazy. This is the same company that refuses to film in certain states in America because of their pro-life policy. This is absolutely absurd. And it's long time, past time to do something about Hollywood's obsequience when it comes to the CCP. Have you had any response? I saw your statement, but I saw a number of statements. Disney typically acts like Disney and doesn't say anything. Is that what's happened? So far, but I'm hoping that we can um, put some pressure on them. Uh, I was sort of joking on a podcast with Jonah Goldberg, our mutual friend, that there should be uh, a disclaimer accompanying each movie playing in the U.S. Uh, that has also been approved to play in China and therefore has the stamp of approval from CCP censors. The idea would be to play a splash screen before the movie starts, warning audiences that the movie's content has been approved and censored by the CCP. And I got inspiration for this disclaimer, ironically, from the Humane Society certification that you see at the end of movies about no animals being harmed in the course of the production. And what's really incredible about Mulan is that right as the credits list all these Xinjiang human rights abusers, Hugh, that cooperated with the production, immediately below, the credits, the credits proudly display that no animals were harmed in the making of this movie. So no animals harmed, just human beings put in concentration camps. So no, the rest no. is easy. Uh, Congressman, people, uh, my theory on why we don't hear more about Xinjiang is that Americans are uncomfortable with Chinese pronunciation, newscasters especially. I honestly believe that the reason we don't is that they don't want to, to mispronounce and get it. But the second reason is the CCP strikes back. They have boycotted Australia. They have boycotted Norway. They strike back at whoever messes with them. Disney has a theme park in Shanghai. Disney sells its movies everywhere in China. Is it realistic for a company that has shareholders to actually do what you're talking about? I, you know, this is different because they didn't have to roll that credit. But to, not, to, to come out and denounce Xinjiang's human rights abuses, which are massive, is it realistic to expect them to do that? I think it is. Uh, well, on the pronunciation, we should just start calling it X province if it makes it easier oh. for the Steelers fans out there. Um, See, we, uh, are, we have common cause in that. We try and make things easier for the Steelers fans. <laughs> um, I, I, listen, I, I think it was interesting. I met with a group of screenwriters, uh, TV screenwriters, when I was doing my, my cyber commission with Senator Angus King. And uh, they sort of quite candidly told us behind closed doors that uh, when the NBA experienced punishment from the Chinese Communist Party in the wake of Daryl Morey's tweet in support of Hong Kong. Uh, they said that no one needed to send the memo to Hollywood because it was received loud and clear. And the message was, don't mess with us or we will hurt your bottom line. So what you are pointing out is absolutely true. Chris Fenton, a Hollywood executive, recently wrote a great book about the way that Hollywood uh, has bent the knee to General Secretary Xi and the NBA has bent the knee to General Secretary Xi. But at the end of the day, I, I think these companies, which um, are extremely successful and wealthy, primarily because of the environment in which they were allowed to grow in America, have to decide which team they're playing for. And it doesn't mean you can't do business at all with China. It doesn't mean that Wisconsin farmers can't sell soybeans to China or that American consumers can't buy cheap T-shirts from China. But I do think we have to draw the line when it comes to things as egregious as contributing to the human rights abuses like we're seeing in Xinjiang province. I do think we're going to have to figure out some form of selective decoupling from China. And even if that hurts these companies' bottom line in the short term, over the long term, they have to know that there's far more opportunity and far more customers in the free world. And oh, by the way, you know, how about the uh, uncalculable benefit of being able to sleep at night knowing that you're not patting human rights abusers on the back and knowing that you're actually contributing to 
uh, America winning this competition for what we want the next 100 years to look like. Now, I can hear a Hollywood producer saying, oh, moral, moralism for me, but not for thee. You, you want Wisconsin farmers to be able to sell into China, but you don't want us to be able to sell into China. What's your response to that, Mike Gallagher? Well, as I said, I mean, we need some form of selective decoupling. And when it comes to technology that the Chinese Communist Party could actively use to uh, abuse the rights of human beings living in Xinjiang province, or when it comes to technology that the Chinese Communist Party could use to build missiles that could sink American ships in a future war, I think we have to draw the line. And to my knowledge, they have not found a way to weaponize soybeans, although we have been getting all these mysterious uh, packages of seeds, yeah, seeds sent from China around the United weird. States. So, Very weird. so maybe there will come a point when soybeans are no longer uh, uh, safe for us but, to trade. But I will also say, to me, the differences between um, selling a product and praising a state police. That's where, I, when they roll the credits and they're praising the organs of the state that actively suppress murder and deny the existence of an entire people, that crosses the line. Well, the other line I think it's important to recognize is it's one thing to just accept the fact that the CCP is going to censor material in their own country. That's inevitable. That's why most social media companies are not allowed in China. But it's another thing to export that model of censorship around the world and force, for example, people doing Zoom meetings about human rights issues in Hong Kong to shut those meetings down, even if the organizers are not in mainland China. Or allowing CCP apparatchiks to spread propaganda on Twitter when they deny access for their citizens to that same platform. So we just need to make sure that we're not allowing the party to export its techno-totalitarian surveillance state to the rest of the world, even as we criticize them for those practices domestically on mainland China. Congressman Gallagher, always a pleasure. I will note that in weeks past, you've worn your Milwaukee Brewers gear, and you don't have that on today, and you've worn your Milwaukee Bucks gear, and you don't have that on today. You only have on the gear of the Wisconsin team that's not playing. So I just wanted to point that out to our audience who are watching on Zoom. No no Bucks, no Brewers. The Indians handled the Brewers pretty efficiently this weekend. I just I appreciate your joining me, Congressman. Have a good weekend. Sorry about that. I thought, I thought the Bucks were coming back.